Welcome to the Daily Quiz Podcast. Today's category is general knowledge. Let's get to it. Question 1. What type of paper do you need to cook fish in papillote in order to seal in the flavor and juices? Is it A. Parchment paper B. Wrapping paper C. Newspaper Or D. Rice paper The answer is a parchment paper. Did you know that the technique of cooking food in parchment paper, known as en papillote, originated in France? This method not only seals in the flavors and juices of the ingredients, but also creates an impressive presentation when served. It's like unwrapping a delicious gift at the dinner table. Question 2. In phonetics, which of these is an example of a plosive sound? Is it A, the R in red, B, the Z in zoo, C, the Y in yellow, or D, the D in door? The answer is D, the D in door. Plosive sounds are created by a sudden release of air after a complete closure in the vocal tract. The D in door is a prime example of this, as the sound is produced by briefly stopping the airflow with the tongue against the roof of the mouth before releasing it explosively. Question 3. What word is used in the NATO phonetic alphabet for the letter N? Is it A. Neat B. Naughty C. November Or D. North The answer is C. November. In the NATO phonetic alphabet, the word November represents the letter N. Interestingly, this choice was made to avoid confusion with other similar sounding letters during radio transmissions. The use of unique words like November helps ensure clear and accurate communication in military and aviation contexts. Question 4. What is a female goat called? Is it A. A Hattie B. A Billy C. A Gertie Or D. A Nanny The answer is D. A Nanny Female goats, known as nannies, are incredibly agile climbers. They have a unique ability to navigate steep and rocky terrain with ease, thanks to their split hooves and flexible bodies. This impressive skill allows them to reach high vegetation that other animals may struggle to access, making them true mountain climbing experts in the animal kingdom. Question 5. Of what is a Jenny the female? Is it A. Sheep B. Horse C. Goat or D. Donkey. The answer is D. Donkey. In addition to being the female counterpart of a donkey, a female donkey is also known as a Jenny due to its distinct name. Interestingly, the term Jenny originates from the Latin word asinus, which means donkey. This unique naming convention adds an extra layer of charm and character to these hardworking animals. Question 6. Which is the only U.S. state whose official song was written for a Broadway musical? Is it A. California B. Oklahoma C. New York Or D. Texas The answer is B. Oklahoma. The official song of Oklahoma, Oklahoma, was written for the Broadway musical of the same name by Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II. Premiering in 1943, the musical became a huge success and even inspired the state to adopt its title song as its official state anthem in 1953. Question 7. What is a male which known as? Is it A. Magician B. Mage C. Warlock 
or D. Magus. The answer is C. Warlock. In ancient times, the term warlock was not always used to refer to male witches. It actually originated from the Old English word warloga, which meant oathbreaker or deceiver. Over time, it evolved to be associated with male practitioners of magic, adding a mysterious and intriguing layer to its meaning. Question 8. What kind of officer is charged with providing clothing, fuel, and transportation for troops? Is it A. A captain? B. A quartermaster? C. A sergeant? Or D. A major? The answer is B. A quartermaster. During the American Civil War, quartermasters played a crucial role in managing supplies for soldiers. They were responsible for not only providing clothing, fuel, and transportation but also overseeing the distribution of food and equipment. Quartermasters often had to navigate through challenging logistics to ensure troops were properly equipped for battle. Question 9. What is the term for the polishing and cutting of stones and gems? Is it A. Iconography B. Byzantine C. Philately or D. Lapidary. The answer is D. Lapidary. Lapidary, the art of cutting and polishing stones and gems, has been practiced for centuries. Interestingly, lapidaries often use a machine called a faceting machine to precisely cut and shape gemstones. This intricate process requires skill and precision to bring out the beauty of each stone in its final form. And with that, we bid adieu to another round of brain-busting fun. Remember, in the game of knowledge, you're always a winner. Farewell, wise ones. I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. See you later, until tomorrow comes around. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. See the show notes page for sources and credits. Check out our other podcasts in our network at classicstudios.com.